Welcome everybody, shalom, hope everyone's weeks, months, hope their year has been well and everything is going according to plan. Um, today we're going to, can we judge or do we have power to judge, right, according to what the law has spoken of and what the word was bestowed upon us, um, we can judge and I'm approved that. Okay, so in the book of Isaiah, chapter 54 and 17. Okay, book of Isaiah 54 and 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment that shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of Yahweh. Their righteousness is of me, saith Yahweh. So we have power to judge everything and condemn, right? No weapon formed against us shall prosper. That is our heritage right there. Okay. I'm going to go to the book of Romans. Oh. The book of Romans chapter 13 and 1. There is so be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God, the powers that be are ordained of God. So this right here goes to show you every soul needs to be subject unto the higher powers. Right? So let's check out in Genesis. Because who truly has the power? Right? According to Genesis chapter twenty seven, verse twenty eight, right? Here it is. Therefore God gave thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and the plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be every one that cursed thee and blessed be he that blessed thee. So this is right here, right, goes into Jacob's blessing. Right, this is between Isaac and Jacob. Right, Isaac gave the blessing to Jacob and he told Jacob that people serve him and the nations bow down to him. Right, so that way he could be lord over his brethren. Right, and their mothers and, and his, you know, the mother's sons, meaning like you know, his grandmothers, right, their sons, let them bow down to him and. If anybody curses him, they shall be cursed. If anybody blesses him, they shall be blessed. All right. So this right here goes into what it means of the higher power. Who has the higher power according to inheritances and according to blessings given to by God? Right. Jacob. Right. He will have the ultimate authority. Right. So if he was to judge, then it will be allowed, you know. But it needs, he, it needs to be done in a righteous judgment, you know. It needs to be done in a judgment where it is righteousness, not according to what how the man feels, right? So, let's go to the book of Romans. Chapter 8, verse 33. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Right? So, nothing can charge God's election. No one can charge anybody who God has elected, basically. Right? Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 2. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth resisted the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive themselves damnation. So we hear once again, who has the power structure, right? Who in the world needs to be subject unto the higher powers, right? It lets you know already, whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resists the ordinance of God, and according to the blessings inheritance it will be Jacob are the cream of the crop at the top of the top right and his sons which is um you know the twelve tribes of Israel okay 
Let's jump down to verse 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Right? So, they say that Israelites out there are terrors. But they're terrors unto good works, though. Right? For those who are out there that are committing the good works... Right? Their terror is unto good works. Right? But to the evil, we bring wrath upon them. We, we, we bring wrath upon the evildoers. Right? Okay. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17 and 11. Deuteronomy chapter 17 11 According to the sentence of the law which they shall teach thee and according to a judgment which they shall tell thee thou shalt do thou shalt not decline from the sentence which they shall shew thee to the right hand nor to the left So right here teach this is goes into teaching all nations right teaching all nations Right? And the man that would do prescriptions, they will now hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before Yahweh the Elohim, or unto the judge. Even that man shall die, and that shall put away the evil from Israel. So if this man, if he does prescriptionally sin, meaning he has heard, right, and he still willingly do it more than, more than the times that they have told him to stop, right, that man will be basically cut off sooner well not sooner he'll be cut off whenever Yahweh gives that judgment basically okay so let's jump down to the book of Romans chapter 13 verse 4 for he is the minister of God to thee for good, but if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of Allah, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doth evil. So this is what that means that you can bring that wrath upon the evil doers. Right? You can bring that wrath upon the evil doers. In the book of Luke Chapter 19, right, verse 27. But those mine enemies, which were not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Right, so, let me, let me read verse 26. For I say unto that unto everyone which shall be given, for him that hath not even that he has shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies which would not that I should reign over them. So right here, right, the enemies that they're not trying to be subject unto basically an Israelite man, right? That man basically he's going against the powers, right? He's going against basically the ordinances that's been set already, right, in Christ tells them bring that man and slay them before him right this is Christ right here right Luke 10 and 17 and the 70 returned again with joy saying Lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name so over here the devils they are subject unto the name of Christ Verse 18, he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Right? So over here, anybody who brings themselves high, right, they get to basically be cast down. Right? They get to be cast down. 
Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So, power has been given to the Israelite man to tread on the serpents and the scorpions. You know, so if that man needs to get physical, then he will have to get physical. Right? Second Corinthians. Chapter 6, verse 4. But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in much patient affliction, and necessities, and distresses, in stripes, and imprisonment, in tumults, in labors, in watching, and fasting, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfine, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. By honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying, behold, we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoice, always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing all things. So that you know the powers that when they say that even the devils are subject unto thy name, and they have seen Satan cast down as lightning, meaning the Israelite man reigning supreme. Well, God has elected that one man or that group to be reigning over the country that's been set forth or the people, the, the, which is the nations, basically. Okay. Book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to pull them down a stronghold. So, you don't always have to get physical to show them the ordinances of power, right? You don't always have to get um, the tool, basically, right? Because our weapon is not carnal, but they're mighty through the pulling down of strongholds, meaning they're in a physical, they're in the spiritual realm. They are in a physical realm. I mean, they're in the spiritual realm, you know, okay? Casting down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing to captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So this is goes into people's imaginations, right, that goes against the knowledge of God, right? And they try to exalt themselves, right, to think that they know it all. Right, they try to exalt themselves that they think they got everything figured out, right? But they're missing one thing, which is the knowledge of God, and by that, by that, right, they get to be brought down into captivity, right, through the obedience of Christ, right? Because the Israelite man, he's the one supposed to bring down his imagination and let him know. The ordinances thereof, letting him, letting them know the knowledge of God, not the knowledge of man. Okay. So, that's basically an exercise of mind control. Right, that is an exercise of mind control, where you can cast down someone's imagination and bring into captivity. All right. Okay, let's go to the book of Second Corinthians chapter 4. Let me see. Let's see if I want 18. And look at the other things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. No, that's not the one. It might be in First Corinthians. Chapter 4. In verse 20. Okay, here we go. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. See? The kingdom of God is not in word. It's not by the, it's not by the word, but, but in power. Meaning, you show them the ordinance of God. You show them the 
what it means to have authority when Jacob was to be Lord over the nations and over his brothers. And that blessing was passed down, that inheritance was passed down to his sons. So his sons get to have the authority and the rule over these nations and over anybody who puts themselves I an exalt a state. The Israelite man needs to cast that man's imagination down and bring it to the obedience of Christ, basically. Okay. And this goes to by the manifestation of the word. By you bringing the word out, you manifesting the power of God. Well, will he, shall I come unto you with a rod or in love or in the spirit of meekness? So this is right here. The rod is to beat someone down, right? Or in love, which is embracing, right? Or meekness, which is in humbleness, right? By which way do the person want to reveal it to? Either by the rod, or by love, or by humbleness. Either ways, the manifestation of the power of God will be brought forth. Okay. Let's go to the book of Romans. Chapter 13. Verse 5. Wherefore he must needs be subject not only for wrath but also for conscious sake. Okay. Verse 6, for this cause pay he tribute also, for there are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. So, they have to pay you tribute for God's ministers. Right? So, for the nations, they have to pay tribute. That is what has been bestowed upon them. Okay? Let's go to the book of Romans. Chapter 2 and verse 1. Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, whosoever thou art thy judges. For in thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judges does the same thing. But we are assured that the judgment of God is according to is, is according to truth against them which commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such thing and does the same, that they shall escape the judgment of God. Or despisest thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. So this goes into people, right, when they make a harsh judgment on somebody. But yeah, again, they themselves are not fully perfect, or they themselves have something that is the same as that somebody else, right? You can't really judge that person. First, you will need to be yourself. Well, you need to fix yourself into repentance first. Right? By God's goodness, forbearance, and long-suffering. But if thou neglect that, and you keep on harassing the man, and keep on judging the man, without examining your very own self, then how can you escape the judgment of God? Okay. Verse five, but after the hardness in 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 between heart treasures up like unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Meaning, only God is the truth. Only God's, he's he makes the perfect judgment. Right, we acknowledge that God makes the perfect judgment. So therefore, we have to analyze ourselves first before we can start judging other people we need to analyze our very own self before we can point the finger on somebody else okay who will render to every man according to their to his deeds to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and mortality and eternal life so there you go that long-suffering forbearance Bringing yourself into repentance, right? Patiently, con continuance 
and well-doing seeking for glory and honor and mortality and eternal life, right? So by you analyzing yourself, by you understanding and using wisdom and not trying to judge somebody, but instead you examine that very own self, you bring yourself into the patience, con con continuance, right? You are well-doing, seeking for glory and honor and immortality and eternal life. Not by man, but by God. Because you're not judging somebody based upon how you feel or whatever. But you you examine thyself and you find it yourself to be aligned. So therefore you can bring the truth out. Okay, so you always got to be aware of yourself, always got to be, um, you always got to be aware of yourself and always got to examine yourself, okay. Let me see, um, go to the book of Romans chapter 1. There you go. Okay. Book of Romans chapter 1 verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his internal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse, because that when they knew God, they glorify, they glorify him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped us, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator. Who is blessed forever, Amen. For this God, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affection. For even their woman did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also the man, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one towards another. Men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving themselves recompense of the error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. But being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, magnanimity, and whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. So right here, this is the truth. Right? This is who the people of Israel must go to and tell them to repent from their ways. But first, they need to check themselves before they can do such things, right? Because maybe someone someone in Israel likes to debate. He has a debate spirit on him. And he tells another man, Yo, I, I, you know, debating is not always the cause, right? Let's, you know, let's find different ways of meaning. But that very own person within himself, he's a debater, right? Or somebody's a backbiter, right? See? All these, this list of things is what the Lord has told, right? And them not knowing anything and they going against God, right? And commit such things that are worthy of death, right? And not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them, meaning they, they love doing these things. They love going against God. Right? They love going against the ordinances of the Lord. Right? And for that very reason, the Lord brings them down. Okay? Romans 3 and 
I'm going to go to 22. I'm start 21. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference, for, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a prohibition through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remissions of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, to declare, I say, at this time His righteousness, that He might be just in the justifier of Him which believeth in Jesus, which is boasting then. Where, I mean, where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also, seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid. Yea, we establish the law. So we hear if a man wants to judge somebody by the by the deeds of the law, right? That doesn't go forth. That is not what the case is. The case is needs to be what the Lord has told to be truth, which is in Romans, the whole book of Romans, basically, right? The whole book of Matthews, right? Because the New Testament or writes the Old Testament. Right, so you need to check and to see what the Lord has said because that way you can help somebody out, you can help somebody out, okay, and not making not making yourself to be on the same with the other person, but instead to make yourself being separate where you can have a righteous judgment, a judgment of the truth, and not by the deeds of the law. Okay? Romans 4 and 1, What shall we say then? Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath wherefore to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward now reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believing on him that justifieth ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. But because Abraham, he didn't have the law. Abraham didn't have the law, but the Lord, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, which was the law of circumcision. Right, but Abraham didn't he didn't he didn't have no law so therefore he did everything by faith. Whatever the Lord told him he did by faith and not by the deeds, or else he will have glory unto himself, saying that look what I've I done. I've com I have done all the laws, I have you know, but it doesn't work like that, you know. Because just because Abraham his just because Abraham's covenant with his sons was to circumcision. There was Ishmael who was uncircumcised um, through the deed. I mean, he was uncircumcised by the law, even though he, even though he might have been circumcised, but the law was not given unto Ishmael. The law was given unto Israel. But what that means is that what that means that you can condemn somebody just because they're not under the law. No, because. That's not how it works, see, because Israel didn't date Israel and our and the four and our forefathers didn't even do all the deeds of the laws correctly. So therefore when Christ came that was gone and a new testament was brought forth 
in the testament are more about faith and grace, right? And believing in the name of Jesus that you will be saved and that you will be pardoned from the sins, okay? So it's about believing in the name of Christ and being subject unto the name of Christ and giving the people a truth, a righteous judgment, not according to by the deeds of law, but by the truth of what Christ has spoken, okay? And converting men's souls, right? And converting men to becoming back into that, um, coming back into that very same that it once was before on who the power of ordinance was given to, right? Not according to by the deeds, but by according to by faith, okay? For when Isaac received the blessing, I mean, when Isaac gave the blessing to Jacob, Jacob had faith that he was chosen to carry that inheritance, Okay, Jacob had faith that he can carry that inheritance with himself to be ruler over the people and giving the people a righteous decree. Not according to the flesh, but according to the truth of the Lord. All right? And Jacob didn't have no law, right? And Isaac didn't have no law. So therefore they couldn't boast upon what these are law they did. But they did everything through faith because they believed in God Almighty. They believed in the word of God by the manifestation of the power of what God showed them. They believed and that was counted to them. And for them to inherit such promises because they believed through faith. Okay. So... Just be aware of what you say to men, okay? Always examine yourself first. Look within yourself first before you can point the finger on somebody else. Examine yourself first, okay? And then through faith, keep it going and keep it going and keep it going. And be merciful for the Lord God Almighty is merciful, forgiving people. So therefore... You yourself should be forgiving people as well. Okay. But if that makes a righteous judgment. That is because. Through faith. That's what has been brought forth. By the ordinances. Okay. But. It's about mercy. And giving the men. And giving the men and women. Repentance. Okay. Or letting them repent, basically. Okay, giving them another chance. Okay, and let the Lord do His thing. Alright. So, let's go to the book of Acts. Chapter 15, verse 20. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city that, that every city of them that preached him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day, then pleased it the apostles and the elders with the whole church to send chosen chosen men of their own company to Antinos with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas surnamed Barsabas. And Silas, chief men among the brethren. Okay. They're going out there into a strange nation, right? To a Gentiles. And letting them know, and letting them have it. Okay. And letting them say what? Just to abstain themselves for these things. Okay. Because why? There was a certain group of men was trying to put the deeds of the laws unto everyone and that's not the case you call those men scribes and pharisees right that's not the case though because when christ came he wrote that so therefore he so therefore he sent paul and barnabas to teach the gentiles 
See verse 19, Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble them not, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. So these Gentiles, they turn to God, but that we were unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication, from things strangled, from blood. Right? So therefore, you don't put no man under the de under the deeds of the law, but you put the man under the truth. Right? Abstaining themselves from pollution, abstaining themselves from fornication, abstaining themselves from things strangled, from blood. Okay. Then please it okay verse twenty three. Then they wrote letters by them after this manner the apostles and elders brethren send greetings unto their brethren which are the Gentiles in Antinos in Syria and Sicilia, for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls, saying he must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we give no such commandment. Okay, because why? Christ didn't tell them to do that. Christ didn't tell those men to go out there and put men under such things. Alright? So, there you have it. Alright? Always examine thyself. Always read. Blesses the man that readeth. Always increase the knowledge. Alright? So, I'm going to end it there. Alright? So with that, Shalom Israel, and blessings to the nations, and blessings to Israel as well.